Hey guys, I'm Allison from Ready, Set, Co-Teach, and I'm here today to walk you through scaffolding um, tasks for distance learning. So now that we've mostly moved online and we're not quite sure what next year is going to look like, um, we're going to show you some of the quick and easy tools that we have learned over the past few months to scaffold um, text and activities for our students virtually. So the first thing you need to do is to start by choosing your text. Now this could be a text from TPT, it could be a text that you wrote yourself, it could be a picture book or a required text from your curriculum. Whatever text that you're choosing based on what you want the students to get out of your lesson, okay, and out of this practice task. Now this obviously will come after you've already taught the, um, the lesson and this is the task that you are attaching to the back of the lesson for um, students to produce and apply. So first thing we're going to do is we need to open up a new Google Slides. So I open up a new Google Slides and I went ahead and named it Moon Phases. Let me make my mouse so you can see it better. All right. Um, I went ahead and named my Moon Phases RI 2.4 because that's the text I'm going to use today. So. The first thing I need to do is I want to insert my text as the background. Why do we do that? So that students can't move it around or uh, manipulate it in any way, such as deleting it. So the first thing I'm going to do is click background and then click choose image. And I'm going to go ahead and hit browse because I've already downloaded my text. I just need to upload it into my Google slide. Now. If you don't know how to create a picture out of a text, there's a couple ways to do it. One, you can pull the text up in a PDF or a, or a Google Doc or whatever you have it on, and you can screenshot it. Um, another way to do that is you can um, put it on a Google slide such as this one, and then all you have to do is go to File, Download, and you'll pick um, the format, which you could pick JPEG or PNG image, okay? And then you'll have it. So here's my text that I'm going to use. And you can notice I went ahead and highlighted a couple of the keywords that I want students to focus on while they're reading this text. Now, I'm gonna grab my cheat sheet here so I don't forget anything. So we've already chosen our text and we've made it our background. So with these keywords, I wanna, one of the scaffolds I'd like to provide my students on this is a glossary, okay? So in order to do a glossary, it's very easy. All I'm gonna do is I'm going to insert a text box and I'm gonna put glossary. Especially with tier two and tier three words, glossaries are extremely helpful for kids, especially when you're not there to answer questions necessarily in person when they're doing it virtually. It's a great way for them to have to, a great scaffold, right? Because text features are wonderful um, in aiding in, compre in student comprehension of text. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a glossary and I'm gonna enter another text box and I'm gonna type my words. Now, one of my words is rotate. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that one in here, rotate. And I need a kid-friendly definition. Now, you can come up with your own kid-friendly definition, no problem. Sometimes I have, like, my brain goes blank and I need help with coming up with the student-friendly definitions. Um, one really great resource, I'm gonna click over here, is actually Merriam-Webster's Learner's Dictionary. If you type in the word that you want a kid-friendly definition for, it gives you a learner's definition. So we're gonna use to move or turn in a circle. And I'm just gonna copy that and I'm gonna put it here. All right, make this a little bit bigger because this looks a little difficult for my students to see. Okay, and now I'd like to add a picture to this, right? I'd like to add a picture so it can be like not only a glossary, but also um, a, a reference for students, a visual reference for students. So for the word rotate, I'm going to insert a picture. So for efficiency purposes, I've already downloaded the pictures that I would like um, from the internet. Just make sure that whatever pictures you use, if you're gonna be um, sharing this publicly, that you do give um, credit where credit is due. But I have some 
um, images here that I'm gonna insert image and I'm gonna type in rotate and there's the image I would like so I'm gonna take that and I'm just gonna put it right here next to my kid-friendly definition so here we go that there perfect all right so the next word I have highlighted there another keyword is phase so i'm going to go ahead and put phase in i'm going to go back to my learner's dictionary here and i'm going to type in phase and see how they define it Ooh, a part or step in a process that's what we're going to use all right so oopsies i'm going to make that a little bigger okay a part or step in a process so now I'd like to insert an image for that one as well. And like I said, I've already downloaded that from the internet. So I'm gonna hit insert image, upload from computer. And I'm gonna type in phase. Let's see, actually, I think it's under my pictures. Yep, because I edited it. Okay, so here's my phase. It has phase one, phase two, phase three. There to show students that phase is a step in a process. So there we go. All right. Now, don't worry if things look a little small. Um, we've taught our students how to zoom in and out, and that might be something that you might want to do as well so that they know um, how to manipulate the tasks so they're easier to read, okay, in the text. All right, so we've got this mini glossary here. Now for the words, the other words I have highlighted, crescent moon, gibbous moon, and full moon, I'm actually gonna put those on the side. They are gonna be, kind of like a glossary, but I want those pictures to be a little bit bigger. And I think that a picture is sufficient um, to show, in fact, I think it's better than words, to show really what those things are. So again, I'm going to go and I'm going to insert some pictures. Now again, I've already downloaded the pictures that I would like to use for this text. If you haven't, you would go to the internet and search for stock images or free images for you to use. So I'm going to go ahead and insert some more images here. And I'm going to do, let's do crescent moon first. There's crescent moon, there's my picture. So I'm going to go ahead and insert that. I'm going to put it over here so that I can be nice and big for students to be able to see. And then I'm gonna go ahead and label this. I'm gonna label this Crescent Moon. Oops, I accidentally hit the caps lock. Not trying to yell. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna center that and I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger and bold. Alrighty. So there we have a labeled visual of a crescent moon. Now I'm going to do the gibbous moon because that's another keyword I have highlighted in my text. All right, we're gonna do gibbous moon. I'm gonna pull it down here. And I'm just gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna copy and paste this and change it to gibbous moon. All right. And the last one we have to insert is the full moon. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Click here, type full moon. This. All right, I'm going to pull that down here and do the same thing. Copy and paste and just change the word to full moon. There we go. All right. Perfect. Okay, so now on the left hand side, we have a little visual word bank there and then a couple of words in our glossary with kid friendly definitions and visuals now obviously you will decide which words you want to teach or which words you'd like to pull out for kids maybe you don't want to create a glossary or um, have visuals with the labels these are all just options so you don't want to over scaffold but we're really going to over scaffold this just so you can see the different options and then you can differentiate it um, or add or take away based on the needs of your students. All right, so we've chosen our text, we've made, a, made it the background, we have our glossary, we've added images with labels. Um, the next thing I wanna do is I want to um, add some audio. 
So I know that for us at Ready, Set, Co-Teach, we teach younger grades. So we've taught uh, first and second. We're moving up to second and third next year, which is really exciting, but we teach younger grades. So often we like to include read aloud as a scaffold for students and as a support. So how do we add audio? Here's how we're gonna do that. The place that I find is the easiest, or the site that I find is the easiest to, to use is onlinevoicerecorder.com. So we're gonna go to onlinevoicerecorder.com and we're going to record the text, us reading the text, okay? Now I'm gonna show you how to do this, but I've actually already done it for the sake of time. So what you do on onlinevoicerecorder.com and the reason why it's so easy is you literally go to onlinevoicerecorder.com and then you just click the record button and it will record you. So let's pretend like I'm reading this. Moon phases. All right. Moon phases. You can play it back. You can also trim it if you need to, if you needed to get a little pause in there before you, so you could click over and see your text or whatever it is, you may cut, you can cut that out if you mess up. All you do is you hit, when you're finished and happy with it, you hit save. And look, did you notice how it downloaded it directly to my computer down here? The only challenge here is that it's going to download it always as the same name, okay? So in order to differentiate between your recordings, um, something I have done is I have created a folder in my Google Drive and it's called audio files. I'm just gonna double click on that. What I do is then I take my recording from onlinevoicerecorder.com and I pull it into my draw, drag and drop into my Google Drive. All right, once it's uploaded, I go ahead and rename it as to what it is so that I don't get it mixed up with other ones. So this one is just the title, which is uh, Moon Phases, okay? Save that, and it's there. It's much easier to insert audio into a Google slide when it's uploaded into Drive. Um, because then all I have to do, I have all my recordings here that I would like to insert into my slide. So all I have to do now is hit insert audio and it automatically is connected to my drive. So then I can scroll and I can pick any of these audio files that I want to enter to input, I'm sorry, into my um, into my activity here. So let's go ahead and I had recorded the entire text. So let me grab that moon phases read aloud right here. So I'm going to double click it because that's the one I want to insert. Now you'll notice it'll pop up as a very tiny little speaker here. We like to make them a little bit bigger so students can really see them and know that they're there as an option. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. You'll also notice on the right hand side, the format options pop up. We always like to pick start playing on click, okay? Because we're gonna insert multiple audio files into this text. So if we have them play automatically, students will open this and it'll all of them will start at once and it will be very confusing. So make sure you hit start playing on click, which is usually the default, okay? Good, so now that I have this inserted, I'm gonna play it just to make sure that it's the right one. Moon phases. There are many phases of the moon. The moon looks yes. different each night. Good, so that's my recording of the text. And I'm gonna put it up here next to the title of the text so the students know that that is what it goes with. Now, I'm for newcomers, for struggling readers, for um, students who need it, um, they may need you to read more than just the text, right? And so we're gonna go ahead and insert a little bit more audio. So I'm gonna hit audio, insert, um, let's do the word phase. So this is just me reading the word, or saying the word phase, pronouncing it. So this is helpful for students who need help with pronunciation or who just maybe aren't as comfortable with some of these difficult words um, as other students, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Usually I like to put it next to the word, but it's being a pain. Okay, 
Okay, so I'm gonna drag it down here now that I've fixed it, and it's gonna be next to face. Okay, so now if they click, they need to, oh gosh, what's that word? Face. It will read it for them. You could also read the entire student-friendly definition for them or however you want to do that for your students. So you can enter audio for anything on here, all right? Now, let's talk about um, instructions. So a scaffold that's really, for us, has been really helpful and important is always having instructions orally and in writing, okay? So for the instructions on this one, I've actually already typed them up. So I'm gonna steal them from my completed one. <laughs> so here are the instructions. And you can just create a text box on the side, put your instructions in, oops, I click off first, there we go. Put your instructions in. And then I went to online voice recorder and I recorded myself reading these instructions. So basically in order to insert instructions, you're just gonna create a text box on the side, go ahead and type your instructions, use whatever font you want, um, put in your instructions for what you would like the kids to do. So for this particular tasks, th these were our instructions. Read the text, answer the questions on the next slide, which we don't have yet, um, and underline where you found your answers using the annotating tools. Now, you're probably asking yourself, what are annotating tools? Now, this is something we took from Jessica Tobin in Elementary Nest, who is also the creator of this text. If you don't know her, she is a TPT author and blogger, and she has great texts that we like to take and scaffold for our students. Um, she also has created something called annotating tools that can be used in interactive tasks like this. All right, so her annotating tools are over here, so I'm gonna steal them real quick. And then I'm gonna show you how to create them yourself. So they look like this. Now, the kids can drag whatever tool they need. Let's say they're reading and they're like, oh, this is really cool. They, it, it's reflected. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna circle the word reflected so I don't forget when I'm doing my work that that word reflected is how the sun's light shines on the moon, okay? Or they can highlight just like I did. They can highlight words. They can pull over um, underlines, things like that. Again, you might wanna create a tutorial for your students before you start using annotating tools so they know how to use them. We had a little video tutorial that we showed students and then we had a, a practice activity where they could just play with pulling the annotating tools and using them and different things. Um, for these annotating tools, how to create them. All you do is you create a text box just like this. You might want to, you can type in annotating tools if you want to label it, give it a title. There you go. And you can do any font, any background, anything that works for you. All right. And then I'm actually going to dump the background and I'm going to make it green. Now, all you have to do is you use a line, create the line. Let's say you want it to be red, so I'm gonna change the color to red. All right, so now I have this line. I'm gonna make it a little bit thicker. I'm gonna go over here, click line weight. I'm gonna go, let's do four. Is four thick enough? My line certainly is not straight. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so we have a line, but the problem here now is if they drag it, it's gone, right? There aren't any more. So literally all you have to do is hit Control C or copy and then control V paste. And then we're gonna take it and we're gonna move it on top of this one. And then you just keep doing it again. Control C, copy, control V, paste it, move it on top, okay? We usually do about five. We haven't had an issue with students using all five. Um, and then you do the same thing for the blue, the green, the highlight, um, and the circle. You insert shape which would be if you want it to be a circle and you create the oval here, you choose transparent as the fill and then you make it whatever color border you would like it to be. Let's make it purple and we'll do four, okay? And then you would do the same thing. Control C, copy it, Control V, paste it, move it up so that it is in line with the one you just did. 
and you just keep doing that for about five times, okay? And then you've created your annotating tools, all right? And you can play with that, make it look however you want. Um, I like to use uh, Jessica Tobin's because hers is just already created. And once you create it one time, that's what's great about these. Once you create your annotating tools one time, you can just come and copy them and put them on all of your uh, activities if you want to. Um, that's a really great thing. All right, so that's the annotating tools. Um, um, so basically, we've just added a bunch of scaffolds for kids. Again, you don't want to over scaffold because then you are, we all, we want the kids to have a productive struggle, right? We want it to be challenging, but not too challenging. So you can pick and choose which of these scaffolds you really believe your students need or differentiate based on the individual needs of your students. All right, so I'm gonna stop here doing all this and I'm gonna show you a completed one that we have done um, with our students this year. So here's one that we have, that we made for our students and it looks different, right? Because not every text needs the same uh, scaffolds. So this one looks a little different. I forgot I highlighted this, I can take that out. <laughs> okay, but you do notice we, we added a picture, right? We added labels with, the, with some of the key words. Um, we even added some little tiny pictures above certain keywords here in case students needed a little bit of a, of a push for the light bulb to come on. And then we have a glossary over here. Now this glossary we have separate instead of at the bottom, you can put them anywhere, right? And then I think I recorded the definition with these two. Branch, a part or division. Algebra is a branch of mathematics. So as you can see, there are different things you can do with this. For our instructions, we have them orally and in writing again. We have that read aloud. Now, the task we wanted students to do with this particular text was uh, we wanted them to answer um, a few questions because we were working on RI 2.1, which is ask and answer questions, um, like TDQs, text dependent questions. So this is the worksheet to go with it. Also from Jessica Tobin, if you see down here, Elementary Nest, wonderful, wonderful resources um, from her if you need a jumping off point. So we took it and we added all the things we talked about. So we added, we also added sentence frames here. If you see, we've added sentence frames. Um, we have our editing tools. We have a word bank. We have instructions. Don't be afraid to play with it and add what you can or what the students need and just see how it goes. And then we've kind of been learning as we go along. The completed moon phases one looks like this. As you can notice, I entered audio for all of these. Um, I didn't want to take the time to do that uh, with you guys here because it would take a little time. But as you can see, we added that. So if there's anything on here that you have questions about or that you would like to learn more about, um, just tweet us or send us a message and we are happy to help out. We've been learning as we go and we're just sharing our learning with you. So um, we hope this was helpful and we hope that you can play with some scaffolds for virtual learning for your students. These can be then directly uploaded into your Google Classroom. You can have them force copied so each student gets their own so they can use the annotation tools without messing up anybody else's work. Um, and we've had a lot of success with these. So we'd love to hear if you use any of these strategies and how it went. And thanks for watching our video.